Hello and welcome to another edition of Professor Speaks. Last week we talked about the importance of immunizations, but this week we're going to talk about some of the hurdles people face when getting an immunization in keeping with National Immunization Awareness Month. So I'd like to remind you before we get into that to hit like, subscribe, and hit the little bell for notifications. Hello and welcome to another edition of Professor Speaks. My name is Alex Fernandez. Alongside me as always is Dr. Craig Stern. And uh, we're going to be t talking about immunizations still. Last week we talked about the importance of immunizations. Today we're going to be talking about some of the hurdles people face. And Dr. Stern, maybe you can help me with that. What are some of these hurdles that people face in getting immunizations? Yeah, I, it's important to realize that immunizations are incredibly important um, as a risk modifier to make sure that people don't get sick and more importantly, to make sure that they don't make other people sick. Having said that, there are things that get in the way, and M was kind enough to bring some issues that uh, first and second generation Hispanic Thank you, people producer. have. Appreciate it. <laughs> that they have uh, that they have problems too. So we'll talk mm -hmm. about it for people that need TB testing and the rest. But bottom line here is, it's terribly important to have immunizations. This is one of the great preventative measures necessary to stop people from uh, getting diseases like the Zika virus um, that affects women uh, who are pregnant, issues with regard to bird flu virus uh, that uh, got a bunch of people sick and killed some people in uh, Canada and other places, issues like polio, which is the famous preventive device, mm -hmm. which used to have people uh, all crippled up and killed them now today. Right. Um, it's a, a, a fundamentally a historical issue. People had measles and mumps and, and um, chicken pox and other things that they didn't have welts all over their face. And in some cases, when adults got it, it would kill them and things like that. So it's terribly important. Right. But it doesn't mean that we should be entirely immune or ignore the fact that people have problems. They at times have to miss work in order to get these tests done. If they're volunteers, clearly they're um, accessing uh, problems or things where they have to pay for it in order to volunteer. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. To have a doctor evaluate you, sometimes you need certain testing, sometimes lab testing, sometimes x-rays uh, if it affects the lungs like it does for TB, and mm -hmm. things like that. So we can't just be immune to it and just ignore it. There are these problems. We have to talk about how to deal with that. Right. And so, <laughs> so how does one deal with that? I mean, we, we've got... The issues with those that come in from another country. I mean, you got first, second generation people from Mexico that producer Ann was telling us that they get a TB shot, but when they come here, they get the when they get the TB test that we get here, that those um, come up negative and they have to come back or get X rays or or so they positive. Come up positive. They come up positive. They come Excuse positive. me. They come up positive, and then they have to come back and get an X-ray. Right. I mean, you could see how that's more of an annoyance than. Well, it's an annoyance. Yeah. It's also a cost, obviously. Right. Because either you have to miss work, or you do it after, before work, or on the weekend. Uh, you have to have a doctor evaluate you. You have to have the cost of the X-ray. You may have to have the cost of the test. So it's not something that is is simple. What is important is that. Um, because this is such a critical issue, um, each county uh, in most states, mm -hmm. and in some cases where they don't have it by county, they have it by state, the public health departments have immunization assistance programs. Mm -hmm. They have doctors that work with them in order to uh, do the evaluations, help them with that. Many of them in county hospitals and county clinics deal with the testing, deal with x-rays and the rest. So it's of either no charge to people or it's a minimal charge to people in order mm -hmm. to deal with it. It may not be entirely convenient from a location standpoint. So it may not be easy access. Uh, the question for everybody is, you tend to think, well, I don't have this particular disease or I'm not at risk, so therefore I don't have to worry about it and I don't have to get it done. Those are the people that do get sick <laughs> because the people that have been vaccinated um, they don't have a problem. The people that don't, that have not been vaccinated, mm -hmm. they get everybody else sick. Right. And so as a result of that, it's not just one person uh, being sick, but it's a whole community of people that get sick for it. That's the deal. 
And there are options for it. I'm not saying that they're perfect. They're far from perfect. Mm -hmm. and we could certainly do more. But people can go into their employer. If it's an employee issue, they can go into areas where they're volunteering or otherwise, and they can say, look, I need help with this. And many of them already have lists of doctors who will help, clinics who will help, mm -hmm. uh, some county hospital clinics can help in order to help people to get this done. So it shouldn't be, they shouldn't be left out in the cold trying to figure out what to do. Right, and uh, just a brief summary of what he was going over, the cost can be a concern for people, but the, the, bene the risks are way worse <laughs> than the actual cost. I mean, oh, they're huge. It's huge. It's they're massive. huge. You're dealing with a spectrum, and nobody's trying to be alarmist, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it is important. You're dealing with a spectrum of people who get sick, to people who die. And mm -hmm. in between, it can be a crippling illness, it can be illnesses that create significant problems with the kidneys, the heart, the lungs, etc. So it can compromise your entire life. So the compromise here is trying to find ways to deal with it. And certainly reaching out and asking, not because it isn't available, but because you need to find the options. Mm -hmm. And understanding that if you don't do it, the consequences could be very severe. Right. And uh, we've mentioned TB tests earlier. What, what are some other tests that that people really need in order to volunteer or work with children? Well, well you know, people often think if you're doing testing, they think of allergy testing, where mm -hmm. you have some sort of a checkerboard and you have different testing that goes on in different boxes and you're looking to see those that have welts. But there's more tests than that. TB test clearly uh, is an issue because you can have uh, the tubercle bacillus that's sitting in the lung, and it may be walled off, but you would still have a reaction to it. So there is an opportunity for that to occur. There's also multiple other um, viruses and illnesses. Uh, the good news for people in the United States is that a majority of those problems occur in other countries, okay. in South America and Africa and otherwise. The bad news for the people in those countries are is, is that because of sanitation, because of issues with water, etc., they do have these problems. And the additional issue is everybody travels today. So it's not like somebody is in a country, I'll never go there, I right. don't have to be worried. In fact, people travel and uh, getting on an airplane or getting on, on a ship or something, you can be in another continent within a matter of days. So as a result of that, or this hours. Is not, or hours, depending yeah. on whether you're flying. Right. So this isn't an issue where nobody has is affected. Everybody's affected. Mm -hmm. And uh, so testing becomes a terribly important issue in that regard. Testing in a general sense, just speaking clinically, is kind of a older form of testing to see whether you have an antibody reaction, an inflammatory reaction to right. a problem. There are much better tests today, and certainly with the new gene testing, etc., those will um, be even further... Um, older and, and mm -hmm. removed. Probably but, not as invasive. <laughs> <clears throat> no. Yeah. But at the same time, you need to be able to make sure that you get the testing um, and the consequences of it are so huge that people have to reach out and to say, look, I want it, but I can't afford all of this. Where can I go? How can you help me to get it done? Uh, and if not, where can I go and it's easy to get to so I can address it and pay for it and deal with it. So there's multiple levels of how people are going to deal with this. Right. But there is an opportunity, there is help. And those things you have to reach out to find out what they are to help you to do it. Right. And who, who are some of those that um, the people out there can contact in order to find um, testing that will be convenient? Well, number one is, the good news is, is the internet has almost everything today. Right. So you can go on the internet and you can find out where your local services are, mm -hmm. and they come under immunizations, clearly immunizations these days, many of them are given in pharmacies, so they're, they're within a couple of blocks of where people live. Mm -hmm. The services, on the other hand, to have it evaluated, perhaps have a test, a lab test, perhaps uh, to uh, have x-rays and the rest. Um, there are, it, it, on the internet, there's a host of different places and, and webs, and, and we'll, we'll go on and try and add them to the list so that people know what it is. At the end of the day, also, there are county hospitals, county clinics, mm -hmm. public health clinics. All of these are available. They may not be 
entirely easy to get to, meaning they may be several miles away from where someone right. lives. They might be or 830 to 5. They may be 830 to 5. They yeah. could be any of that. <laughs> but you have to find out where they are so that you have some availability of doing it. Mm -hmm. And if it is an issue that's required of schools, uh, issue of required of, um, of a job, issue mm -hmm. required of some volunteer work that you're doing, you have to reach out to them and tell them, I need time to be able to do this. You're requiring it. I need help time to be able to do it. It's a it's a benefit for everyone. It's a benefit so, for a society. It's a for, benefit yeah. for society and yeah. people have to pay attention to it. So that was very important stuff. Thank you again, Dr. Stern. We're, we're keeping in our talks with National Immunization Awareness Month. Last week we talked about how important it is. Today we talked about some of the hurdles people will face, but good news is there's a lot of help out there. There's You can type into your Favorite search engine, you can do Google, Bing, what up, what, is there another one out there that you like? <laughs> We're engine. not advertising no. these search no. engines. I'm saying you can use <laughs> any search engine and you can find your local pharmacy that will provide it, your local clinic, whatever's open and available. And I'm sure a lot of you have insurance, I hope. <laughs> and a lot of insurance agencies will cover it. You just have to contact your insurance provider and they'll be available. Um, anything else you'd like to add? No, it just, it, it's terribly important that people realize that when you do immunizations, you're helping two people. One is you're helping yourself, mm -hmm. and two is you're helping the people around you. Because if you don't do it, then getting sick means you're going to get other people sick around you. And that's not a help, especially when you're trying to deal with it. The people that are closest to you are going to be most affected, family, friends, and then, of course, everybody else. Right. That's why more people need to talk about immunizations. Very important. So thank you again, Dr. Stern, and thank you for at home for watching. And uh, we would like to remind you to visit ProPharmaConsultants.com and uh, check out our free information page called RxInfoX. And also I'd like to remind you to hit like, subscribe, and hit the little bell for notifications.